Hey guys, welcome back. I am here again, once again, uh, with a time-lapse video, and today I'm working on another piece in the Sinister Serenade series, and that's a lot of S's to pronounce after each other. Um, today I'm working on a piece for the Frog Prince, and I decided that for this particular piece, I really, really wanted to dig into those gothic vibes. Um, so what I did is I, I kind of I tried to set up two different wor worlds um, and in one world, one at the top, we see the frog and obviously at the bottom half we see the prince. So together they form the frog prince. Well that's um, all shits and giggles aside. Um, I really try to work with contrast in this one. Um, so what I did is I, um, I split up my illustration, the composition of the illustration, in two very distinct pieces. But ultimately what I did want was that they um, would look like, like two sides of the same coin. So they are the same world, as it were, um, but I wanted them to be two completely different instances. Um, so in the world of the frog, what I, what I did is I, I worked with these almost Cajun like Cajun swamp kind of colors very yellow and greenish uh, very glowing very it, it's almost like it was um, Well almost like it was taken from the frog prints like the Disney version um, It is I, I, I did not necessarily draw inspiration from that I it did cross my mind actually that the color schematics are actually pretty similar and um, you know what I'll take it because that is that is kind of the atmosphere that I was going for. Not necessarily the Disney part of things, um, but the swampy and the, the Cajun-y kind of vibe. Um, just to, to sort of emphasize that contrast with the world that's going to be at the bottom. Um, what was very cool here is that um, within these yellow and green background colors, <coughs> pardon me, Within his yellow and green background colors, uh, the frog itself had all these different tones of brown and blue even to sort of give him that like wet skin kind of vibe. Like there, there is light reflecting off of his skin. Um, but at the same time, you want to see his natural color. Um, and one thing that I kind of struggled with here is the texture. Now texture really is the keyword for this entire illustration. Um, a lot of you people know me as someone who really works with smooth layers, smooth colors, everything is blended until it's entirely smooth and this, this velvety look comes into it. Um, now this frog was actually one of the first times that I really, really tried to step away from that um, and try to add in this grainy almost like, you know, this, this warts. It's almost very toad-like in a way. It's not a frog, but a toad. Um, but I wanted to give that skin that wet, but also warty looking texture. Um, and so the way I did that was in the very first instance, um, I did what I always do. I, I give all these color um, areas uh, and then give them a, a very good blend. Um, but after that, you see me, you see it happening right here as I give all these little dots. It's also almost like pointillism in a certain way. Um, and I blend those just a little bit. So we get a very smooth underskin. And then on top of that, to add texture, I add these little dots that I only blend partly. Um, and in the end, I was actually quite happy with the result because. Um, this really, especially in the chest and on the nose, you see that bit, it really gave th that, that skin look, that, that leathery texture that I was looking for on the frog. Um, so yeah, <laughs> here's another fun part, and actually it kind of scared me to death what happened here, and you might actually see it. Um, sometimes I get really, really hyper-focused, and I forget things. Like, I remember with one of the Age of My series, uh, or pieces, I forgot a tail, or sometimes I, I just leave out details, I forget whiskers, whatever. <laughs> and it scared me to death because here I was drawing, and in I think these were two different drawing settings, and I created one hand with three fingers and one hand with four fingers, and I was like, oh lord, this is like, everybody is going to say, well, that's AI. Well, I'm telling you, this is not AI, but I kind of felt like a freaking computer because I did not notice until very late in the illustration that in these two different illustration uh, instances that I've been working, 
in my mind, I was like, well, he's a toad or he's a frog and it's like a fairy tale figure, so he's gonna get three fingers. And in the other instance, I was like, well, it's a frog, he's got four fingers and I ended up having two different hands and I fixed that later on. Um, but yeah, I, dude, my heart went in my throat because I really kind of feared that people would think weird things and... Uh, which, in fact, is kind of scary on its own, because why... <laughs> I mean, mistakes were made. Like, people people make errors. Isn't that the whole part of human art, is that we make errors? Um, but it's such a weird state of the community at the moment. It's like, where, when you make an error, especially when it involves fingers, people are immediately pointing their little fingers at you, um, calling AI. Well, um, clearly you can see <laughs> that this is all handmade. Um, but anyway, I'm dabbling way too long on this, but it was just, it, it, in hindsight, this was actually kind of funny because, you know, because of this whole thing surrounding hands and fingers at the moment, um, at the same time, yeah, I was, I was kind of scared. Um, but anyway, at this point, you can already see that I'm working on uh, the prince itself and what I did to, to enhance that contrast between the prince and the frog. Um, was that where the frog was really this warty, leathery looking thing. Um, this guy is dressed in these gothic, velvet, uh, again, very smooth textures. Um, so he is blended to the max. Like, I, I really did not want a single rough edge on him, simply because I wanted to create that contrast. And at the same time, he is a reflection in the water, and water itself is a very smooth texture. Um, so I didn't even give him a lot of details, because I, I wanted him to be very basic in a way, but at the same time, really give that, you know, that air of royalty, because he is a prince. So he's got this waistcoat, he's got this little bit of a sexy thing going on with the with the collar of his of his shirt there. Um, I, I wanted him to be um, a reflection of emotions more than I wanted him to be a perfect reflection of a guy in a mirror. Um, so there was a lot of stuff to play with there. Um, um, the funny thing is I drew him upside down <laughs> and what I realized later on is when, when you draw something upside down and then you flip it, it, it kind of looks weird and I, I have not quite figured out why that is, but I, I mean, the most, what makes the most sense is that, you know, you skew your, um, um, your proportions when you, when you look at things upside down. So you can tell by his, his face, like, it looks okay, but there is something different about it. Um, there's different proportion. I think at some point I even I enlarge his eyes a little bit more just to sort of give him that little bit of, more of a face. Um, <clears throat> but it was interesting to see how that worked because he, you know, I intended him uh, to be looked at upside down. Um, but yeah, I mean that's uh, the process of the of the frog prince, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do follow the channel if you're new um, and leave a like and comment if you want to support the channel. And I always appreciate it, of course. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.